This is K4, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Tune in. If I see him, I want him, it ain't about a dollar. I put on a set, I'ma stretch him. From the valley was hard, I love all the gang. The one with the plane get the mess. All right, so we got K4 off the porch with us today, man. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Appreciate y'all for having me. Appreciate y'all for having me. Yeah, appreciate you coming all the way down for this one. Yeah, it's been a long way to drive. I don't know why the fuck I ain't fly. But that drive was a motherfucker. But appreciate y'all for having me, man. Yeah. So what do you got working on here in Atlanta for this trip? Uh, we finna <clears throat> hopefully uh, get in somebody's studio after this and then uh, go out and see what, what the nightlife like. We're going to see what, what it's like when it get dark. I ain't never been to ATL. This is my first time out here. So. Oh, really? Yeah, we're going to see what it's like. But yeah. that's my plan so far. For today, at least, that's going to be my plan. Yeah. yeah. So, what's life like in Rock Island, man? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's it's chill. Like all my so like a lot of my high school, junior high, and some of my elementary was in Davenport, Iowa. It's like five minutes from Rock Island, Illinois. But like I was still living in Rock Island because I had a cousin that was I was five uh, years apart. Hmm. I mean, five months apart with. So like I would stay with her, and I was just staying in Rock Island, but. They like, you can cross from Iowa to Illinois, like right into Rock Island. But life in Rock Island, like my whole family grew up, grew up in Rock Island. So like the house that I was growing up in, my mama had grew up in and uh, my aunties had grew up in. They had went to the elementary school across the street. So like, we was good. Like, it was good. It was, it was cool. It was cool. What's there to do in uh, Rock Island? Shoot, what is it to do? That's the problem now. It ain't nothing to do. But what it was to do, because I ain't been, like I said, I haven't been in the city. I don't be there. Mm. I don't know. Niggas be, no, you can't even do that. They be hanging out. You, you, can, you can bowl. You can bowl. Niggas don't do that no more. I'm lying. <laughs> I'm lying. Niggas don't do that. But really, when you, whatever, I'm, I'm in back home, I just deal with my mama. I just go back home to see my mom. Yeah. If I ain't going to see my little brothers, like my family, then I ain't going. It ain't really, it don't really be much to do. I got one brother left that's back in, in the city that I'm from. And like, we just working on getting him out. Like, but everybody dispersed with nobody there but my mom. So that's why I be with my mom. So at what age did you jump off the porch? Mm, what age wasn't we off the porch? I was just, uh, we was just having a conversation about, uh, cause you know, the Corona got niggas acting crazy. So we was just talking about like drive by shootings for some odd reason, uh, last night. And I was like, I can remember when I was like nine years old, I seen a drive by shooting playing basketball, like on the curb. And we just kept playing basketball. Like, you know, you remember the niggas drive by and my mom, I mean, my aunties and my mama came outside and was like, and them niggas out here shooting again. But you know, shit was on the news, but I'm like nine years old. So w w off the porch, I don't know. I feel like you was born off the porch. You know what I mean? When you come from the projects and then you be, yeah, you, you born off the porch. But I ain't never been, I feel like my mind ain't never been off the porch. Like to keep it all the way 100, I've always tried to be like the motherfucker that's, I ain't got to worry about finances type shit. It don't got to be drug money, you know. So, but off the porch, as far as in the streets, we was born off the porch. Like, we was born in two streets. So. Yeah. What would you say is one of the biggest life lessons you learned while growing up out there? Dude, it's crazy because so much be going on, it changed. Like, so often it be changing. But I would say the most important one right now is like, you, you really can't truck. If it ain't the man that I brought with me, if it ain't my cameraman or not my brothers, like my blood, I don't trust them. Like, that's what it taught me. And it taught me that, like, I, like the longer my mom stay there, the longer she going to, it's going to get worse. You know what I mean? So it teach me, like, I'm going to make my family, like, see shit they ain't never seen before type shit. But. So you started off singing in the church, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Man, I forgot all about that. <laughs> so yeah growing up my pops is like a real music like addict 
a real big Michael Jackson fan. So he, uh, we, I got a lot of brothers, right? So we did this whole Jackson Five type shit. He used to like make us sing on the curb and for the block, you know, type shit. So karaoke system. He still do Michael Jackson stuff to this day, but he used to like make us sing on the porch and shit. So like that, eventually I was going to church like my grandma and my grandpa, and then uh, my granddad. I'm talking to my gra grandpa. Anyway, so then. Um, I, they they realized I could sing like at a young age. So the funny thing is I had stopped rapping for like eight years because in singing in general, because in the church, they was forcing me to sing. Like I, I was shy, you know, growing up, I didn't want to talk to nobody. So then they was like forcing me to sing. And I was like, so when you ask me to sing, I don't want to sing. So then I had stopped like singing. People was telling me I sing like a girl, you know, my voice, my voice soft. But like, I didn't pass all that, but like, so yeah, I grew up singing in the church, yeah. And now that I look back on it, I'm glad, I'm glad that they made me sing in the church on myself. Cause I, I got some, some vocal lessons that niggas didn't get on myself. <laughs> like, yeah, keep it 100. All right, so what, what had motivated you to start rapping and uh, you know, get back to singing? So on my, we had, so I went to Iowa State uh, for school, like sports purposes and stuff. Uh, Cause that's what I was doing. And then I ran into this dude named Solo. Like I had got my first job at like 18. I had moved to college and I, that first year, yeah. So I was like 18 or like 19. I got my first job ever working with my right hand man, which is, hey Mitch. So this little nigga, little ghetto dude from Houston on my soul, shout out to Solo. So this little nigga from Houston used to come in the subway every day asking for free shit. Like, you know, you want free drinks and stuff. So then we was letting them slide. Like, we don't care. We be in there chilling. So we letting them slide. He started bringing the whole, like, neighborhood in there. So now it's five and six kids running in. They not even asking. They just trying to grab cuts. So then eventually he had, like, had some shit going on. He asked us to move in with us. So we looked out for him. This years later. It's maybe, like, two years later. He do the music stuff. So he, like, put me back on. Like, I can actually produce it, you know. So, like, all I need you to do is rap. And I remember one day I just did a song with him and that bitch was golden. And then he taught me like how to work the computer, like, cause I had already knew how to do it, but he taught me a new software that's like some new shit, you know? So then he showed me that shit. We took off. Yeah. He started making hit after hit. I was making like 10 songs a day. And oh, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Like it was to the point where and every single song I, I could play one through 10 and motherfuckers to just be like damn like but i'll I be, I be into it I be into it that's why that's what my baby that's what my baby do it oh who, geez solo yeah. who were you listening to back then uh what age we talking oh, when you started picking it back up uh, i was listening to rod wave that's another reason why i'm here i seen y'all had rod wave mm -hmm. i respect rod so i uh i was listening to him little dirt um, it was just shit going on like in my life and it was, I was listening to it like, like every time I play my, cause I'm a music junkie. So like every time I'm playing my music and I'm like, I'm really living the shit these niggas talking about. And then I'm like, I can sing, like I can rap, you know? So then when he showed me that, it's just weird. It was just like, hmm. it was crazy. So then, yeah, that's really it. Yeah, that's it. So like Rod Way, Lil Dirt. Uh, let me let me think about some niggas that I really be listening to. Jake Wapo from New York. I listen to Tusi. I'm a real big Tusi fan, and just because he an impact. Uh, uh, simple niggas like Polo G. I listen to like Polo G. Uh, G Herbos. Uh, yeah, I like I like the niggas who could take it a step further. That's why I like niggas like Jake Wapo. I like niggas like Jake Wapo and uh, Rahway. Yeah. yeah. You feel like your singing ability helps separate you from other artists out today? Yeah. I didn't feel like it at first. Like, at, at, at first, I started feeling like, yeah, I just can sing. Like, other niggas can sing, too. But now it's like, for the first time ever, I feel like my, I, like my shit different, you know? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I really be making songs, and I make them in 15 minutes. I swear to God. Every song that you didn't heard on every project that I put out, every video has been made in 20 minutes. 
I can't cap. And I'll be feeling like I really get done making a song and I'll just be feeling like when I get to hearing the melodies, it's not even like a cocky thing, but it's just like, I'm even like, I blow myself away. Like certain guys can't take it to that level, you know? Hmm. I feel like I can compete with some singers, you know? So yeah, I'm confident in the singer. Send me a part if you do. How'd you get your name, KFO? So my Mur my name was Big Murph, uh, double O. Cause my dad is uh, from East St. Louis, but he had moved like in my younger years, he was like around and they had, he was Murph like in the streets. So like they had, for some reason, they my last name Murphy. So they just take off the, the Y everywhere I go, it was just Murph, Murph. So I was big Murph double O cause my little brother OTM Murph. So I, I, I got a lot of little brothers. They all like something Murph, something Murph. So I'm like, I'm big Murph double O. So then one day I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm on the highway. My roommate texts me and he like, K4 sound dope. And he like, but the four in it, cause I'm from the quiet cities. Hmm. So then we was like the K-A-Y, you know, for like my name. Cause we could still keep the Kevin part. Then we put the four and then the O-E and I ain't folding. So like K4. And then just, <laughs> I changed it literally. He texts me, I'm on the highway in the passenger seat. I'm changing it. And then yeah, the rest is history. I'm in love with that shit, K4. All right, so what's the music scene like back at home? So, uh, it's a lot of guys doing their own stuff. Like, like I was speaking before, T the Guy. I know you know T the Guy. I got a little homie named CA, and I listened to this uh, dude named Pootyville. That's kind of actually, I didn't say Pootyville is like up. Like, he's been rapping for a minute, and he got some views, but like, people don't listen to him. But I'll be listening to him. And then, um, this is just a lot of people doing their own stuff, but like, like I was saying, if I take you back to where I'm from, you'll be bored like in five minutes. So it's a lot of guys trying to branch out. They like trying to go to places like this, come, come to Atlanta, trying to go to LA. So like, like me, I'll be so busy to where I can't even go home. Like I go home for two days. I'll be home for like five hours and then I'm back on the highway. Hmm. So like, yeah, yeah, that sums that up. <laughs> That's what the music industry is like out there. It ain't, it just really ain't, it don't exist, you know? Like we don't even have a music, like a radio station. Really? Like we could take like our music to and be like, you know, I'm dope, like play my stuff. Like the ra the only black radio station back home only play like pop music, you know? <laughs> no, no disrespect to my radio station back home. Cause the niggas working. But yeah, like we don't have, you know, in bigger cities you have where you can go and niggas be like, I heard you on the radio or something. No, we ain't got that. You're not taking him as you know. So you have to come out here at this point. Like it'd be sometimes I'm a little uncomfortable, but we have to be out here because you got to let people see it, you know, see what's going on. Okay. Do you get a lot of support in your city? I don't know. That's the crazy part. I feel like I do because I show so much love before I left, like to keep it all the way 100. I show so much love to so many little niggas. I got six little brothers. So like it's just so many friends in so many different places. And then my friends alone, like growing up in the hood, I show so much love. I feel like I do, but I don't know. I don't go home. So like, I don't know the, uh, my cameraman from where I'm from. So like, I'll ask him like on the ride up here, we was talking about like how the city, like receiving my music, but I really don't know. I really don't know. So she fuck with me. Fuck with me, Casey. All right. Talk to us about this new project, K tape. Okay. So the K tape. <clears throat> what inspired me was like the Tory Lanez like remixing music, but I was like, I'm not really into the like, like remixing music. I'll still like a sample or something like he be doing, but I just don't want to go too deep into like recreating a song. But I stole the idea of like K tape one and then I kept the four in it for the, the A. So I'm going to like keep the four for my city, like in everything I do. But uh, yeah, I just, I'm going to do like a K tape one, K tape two while I'm so then uh, like while I'm releasing them tapes, showing people that like this music, I'm like this music shit is I'm got shit to release. I'm still releasing albums. You see what I'm saying? So like it might be an album format. Like I don't even know how that stuff works, but I know I'm going to be releasing like bigger stuff. You know, my, my ideas is bigger. So that's just going to be like K tape, like one through 10 or whatever the fuck going on. And then I'm going to have like albums and yeah, you get the point. Yeah. Disrespected. Was that one of the albums you dropped? Yeah, that was the first one I dropped. Okay. Yeah, that's the first one I first started rapping again. That's the first thing I dropped. 
Mm. That that album is probably like 15 songs and we picked from like 200. Oh, wow. <laughs> within like two months. But then I didn't wait. <laughs> oh, this nigga who been like with me all along, I didn't wait. I just picked them and just put them out. He been rocking with that bitch ever since. Oh uh, yeah, niggas playing the cake, playing the disrespected album ever since. So like, this shit just adding up. But yeah, that's the first album I ever put out. Yeah, disrespected. I even can listen to it. I used to make music when I was in my eighth grade, but I couldn't listen to it. Like this shit was like corny. People would be like, I like it, but now I play my shit front to back. Shit, tears and all. I'd be like feeling my shit. So yeah, that's the first album. Did you have a personal favorite song on that album? Probably the one with my brother Rockingham. If you get a chance, go listen to Rockingham. It's got to start by it. Go on iTunes, K four K A Y four O E. Listen to that Rockingham on that disrespected album. He gonna blow you away. That's the crazy part. He gonna blow you away. That's my favorite song on that album, Rockingham. What's the single that you're pushing right now? Uh, for a second, I had got caught up in like like talking too much about the way I was living <clears throat> and like the stuff that was going on in my past. But like my main message, the, the whole, my like reason for my existence is just to teach people like, I didn't been to the other side. And like, it's not worth going over there. Like stay, like just stay in the real world. Like the shit that niggas be doing every day is something you just don't want to do. You might, it might look cool, like, I promise you, like, man, wake up and if it take it, like I said, with the music shit, if it take for you to listen to a gospel song or for you to listen to the corniest nigga there is, do that every morning because this game, like street shit, it's not, no. That's the message that I'll be pushing. Like, you can be hood. Like, I went to college. I can go get a degree and come back to the block and be on the block chilling because you can't judge me as a person, but like my message is still like, regardless of what you see, you don't know what's right here. So like, that's my thing. I want niggas to get out of their like, get out of their feelings, man. Get get out of it. Man, get in your bag, get out your feelings, get in your bag and get in your mind, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, get in your bag. Start reading or something. That's my message, start reading. You working on a new album right now? Shoot, at this point, I'm probably like 300 songs up. So like, we're going to record what I record out here, probably put it on ice. And I'm probably just going to pick. I'm thinking about releasing a, a like a six song EP, like real soon, like real soon. So we just going to put something real sweet together, like to show people I can actually rap. Cause like I was just like rapping and then we're going to put that out. And that's all like, yeah, we just probably gonna pick. But like, um, I'm not working on nothing right now. I mean, I'll be scroll. I'll be, I don't even I don't even listen to myself sometimes because it's too many songs to pick from. It's kind of like I'll get I'll be sitting there for like two hours listening to myself. There's no point. There's no point. And I'll be smoking. So like, yeah, I get high and the whole day I go past, I'll be listening like to myself. I only made it through half of my songs. Like, I'm cool. But we'll just go back, pick hot as shit, and then we're gonna put it out. And shit I really made, so I hope they fucking with it. Well, can you tell us about this uh, video for uh, Truly Sorry? Uh, it was out of my comfort zone, like, because I brought my mama into the video. Like, my mom, the type of person that's like, uh, she got a degree, too. She the only other person in the house that got a degree. But she, like, she don't really like the street stuff. But, like, when you from the hood, it's kind of just is what it is. So like my mama, one of them moms that be like, I want to get in the video. I dodge her every time. Like I remember going to the hood to shoot a video and she like pulled up like 15 minutes later, chased all my <laughs> homies away. Like y'all can't be down here. Like they be shooting down here. Like mama, like we down here. We left. Moral of the story, we left. But uh, the, for that video, like, I, yeah, I brought my mom in it. I brought my godson in it, like who, who was real important to me. And we just, uh, I try to let people in on like how I really feel, you know? And then like, so when I do, cause I really truly feel like I'm gonna take off. So when I take off, I could just be like, go watch that truly sorry. You know what I mean? Go watch that. 
that'll tell you what's really going on inside my head. So that's what that that's what that video about. Who are some of the producers you've been working with lately? That's crazy. The producers that I've been working with is myself. Every single song that you hear, every single everything that you hear is me. Hmm. Everything. Like Dan, I wish that answer was longer. Everything that you heard is me. I got this little computer in my right outside my door in my apartment, in my like my room. Like it'd be four o'clock in the morning, I can't go to sleep. I sit on the toilet because I don't know why I'm comfortable with the bathroom. I be sitting on the toilet, I, I smoke a beezy, and then I uh, that little computer. I just walk out there, my room. I walk out my room and I record like five songs, and then. I just, yeah, so I'll be recording my only stuff. I'll be, reading. that's just me. Yeah, that's me. What's, what's your degree in? Uh, business entrepreneurship. Okay. I ain't finished college yet, but uh, business entrepreneurship. Yeah. Look to start your own label one day? Yeah. I'm already kind of like, I got so many niggas that's hot. Like, yeah, I got so many niggas that's hot. It's just really a matter of time. Like, it's like if I blow, now I'm just gonna put them on. Like, it's man, I can sit, I can sit right here and play you some of like my blood, like my blood brother. I could play you the little nigga solo that I was just talking about, and they'll blow you away. So it's kind of, it's really just a matter of time. It's kind of like I got the image right now. We finna take off. I, I know I'm here with it. They kind of just in the streets still doing whatever the fuck they doing. So like. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump off the porch and then we. I'm just gonna put them on, sign them under me, and get them paid. Yeah, yeah. Start my own label. All right. What's next for you, Capo? Man, I don't know what's next for me. Uh, more music videos. Uh, we like to make movies. I feel like my music be the type of music that when you listen to it. You can't like you can't get halfway through my song and just be still like you know how you be listening to a song and you be on your phone or you be like driving you're not really listening to it you just be doing what you're doing no like my music when you listening to it you get thirty seconds in you're gonna be like hold on what did you just say that's my type of music so like what's next for me is to like I'm out searching moving working trying to like feed this so like I got more stuff to talk about. I want to experience more stuff. Like last night we was in a, a hotel, you know, looking over Atlanta. I've never been here, let alone, I've never, I've never been in a hotel with a window like that. People might see me and think I do, you know, like the homies that I hang around, but like, I ain't, it's some stuff I ain't never seen. So like, that's what's next for me is like steady trying to network. I just, I, I kind of want to just, at this point, I'm so like invested in myself. I, I believe in myself so much to the point where it's gonna take one of these niggas that's on to hear me, and they just gonna be like that nigga. That nigga cold, like. And and it's I used to be at a point where I didn't even want to show people my music, and now it's kind of like, I just be in the cut, like laughing, like this nigga play my music, and and I watch somebody like who the fuck is this, and I just be like yeah, like well I'm going to the stars, so yeah. That's the only thing I ain't never like I ain't never had. Uh, issues with like dealing with other people. I've only had, I got two other best friends and then my right hand man is my, my roommate. I don't have friends. But like right now, it's just like I know that's what it's going to take. It's going to take for somebody to take a risk. But I ain't tripping because I know when you take the risk I'm going to just be laughing like why? Like just watch. So yeah. It's just going to fuck the game up. And I truly believe I'm gonna fuck the game up. Yeah. All right. Any shout outs before we wrap this up? Shout out to my brother in Kansas City. He been discontinued for so long. Uh, shout out to my man Dion, because I know he probably feeling like I ain't talking about him the whole interview. A uh, shout out to my brother Dion. Um and shout out to my mama. Shout out to my family, rest in peace, grandma, rest in peace, fat man. And we finna I hope we finna turn mm -hmm. ATL into a movie while we out here. So I think that's a wrap. Cool. If I see him, I want him, it ain't about a dollar I put on a set, I'ma stretch him From the valley was hard, I love all the gang The one with the plane, get the message You know this shit get hot, you fuck up the pot That's part of your